Let's rock and roll. Fire away. Um, Mike Gundy said something the other day about your offense I want to ask you about, which is he said, you know, you he basically described you as kind of a traditional wishbone guy and that a lot of the concepts spring from the triple option. Just how do you see the triple option? Like what kind of central role do you see that playing in the way you operate the whole offense? Um, okay. So first of all, if Coach Gundy knew me and dressed me by name, I'm flattered because I really respect what he does. So that's flattering. Um, there are option components of what we do. It's certainly not all we do. Um, it's a part of what we do. Um, as we know, and we've talked in here before about putting stress on defenses and um, making sure that they're very option sound in what they do as individuals and personnel wise. Uh, and everything that we're doing, I think is important. You know, we want it, like I've said before, as much stress as we can put on the opponents, we want to be the most stressful team in the country to prepare for. And when you can put option opponents, what you're doing, it's that adds that element. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's components of that in there. What were the, what did he say exactly again? He he said you were like a traditional wishbone guy. Traditional wishbone guy. And he said you now again, I did play in a, almost a traditional wishbone offense back in college. So if again, if you knew that, I'm flattered. And then he said. Find it. But essentially, he said, you know, you guys do a lot of things with pulling guards and pulling guards and tackles over, and that a lot of the run concepts in your offense spring from the triple sure. option. Yep. Well, you better be option sound on what we're doing. So he's right on that for sure. Hey, Andy, with Oklahoma State, they do the three three five. Mm -hmm. Is that different for you to prepare for? Well, you see now what's happened in our league that's become very very prominent, and you can see that starting to spread a little bit more amongst other uh, you know leagues in college football, and there's a reason people do it, and. Um, you know, they're uh, and a credit to what they're doing defensively. You can see that they're growing every week and getting better every week with what they're doing schematically. So, um, you know, statistics lie and liars use statistics. They're getting better every week defensively with what they're doing schematically. And so we'll have our hands full. And I'd like to believe that we are too, right, as a football team, right? And so I think when you look at teams that are playing good football in the months of October and November, that's a common theme. That you see improvements, you see better understanding, you see uh, players, you know, having a vested interest in their own personal growth and getting better throughout the course of the season and not letting things that might distract them from wanting to do that, right? The emotions involved in, in playing a season, you know, injuries or whatever it might be. But I think when you see teams that are doing a good job and playing at a championship level, they they have that in common. You're like, man, they're just getting better every week. Do a lot of teams in the MAC use the three three five, or did you in the MAC before you came? Before we left, no. No, I don't. I can't speak to it now, though. Yeah. So then, how over time has that helped you scheming against it or playing against it when you've got more reps against it? Well, when like I think when when we were, I don't forget who we were playing, but somebody asked a question here about, you know, when did you first look at films, right? Okay, when did you first start looking at a, a, the opponent? Maybe in Illinois week, perhaps. And I said, you know, when we first look at them in the spring, I mean, we evaluate who we're going to play in the season how many teams are running these kind of defenses or this kind of defense and things that we need to do to attack it to make sure that we're getting reps of those things moving forward through spring and fall camp. Because there's nothing worse than spending all spring and fall doing this and then you get into game weeks and you start all of a sudden have to do something completely different. So this defense, because of the number of teams that do this schematically, we're been, we prepare for it all year round now. And what we do, we make sure we work these those, those combinations. We make sure we identify you know who those players are. They know the third safety. You know they know the coverage terms. They being our players, um, and it's always uh, in your thoughts and in your minds. So, so we, so we, it, a lot. We spend a lot of time talking about. It. Is there anything different about Oklahoma State this year? Obviously, they've got a new defensive coordinator. Are they doing anything different schematically? Well, well, yeah, it's schematically. We just talked about with me being a three safety defense now, yeah. which is is a pretty decent change from what they were, you know, the previous year. So, um, and as I pointed out, the fact that they're getting better every week shows you their commitment to doing it, right? But from a personnel, there are some similar players and some aren't, some are in different spots, you know, but um, like college football nowadays, every week you, you just, you, you're never sure who's gonna be out there from injuries to new players to transfers and all that. It's, it's, it's you very rarely do you see, oh, well, that guy was there three years ago. You know, like you don't see that stuff as much anymore for whatever reason. So um, there are some, the same, some same players, but their scheme is different. We heard from Lance about how last week a few guys had missed some time in practice due to various <coughs> ailments and illnesses and whatnot, and offensive line was still able to come out and deliver that performance they did. Just what is it about your offensive line that makes them able to be so cohesive even when they've got people switching in and out? Well, I think you, you had just said what's really important is the cohesiveness. 
is you have a lot of guys who are on the same page and what we're doing, right? And those five guys, you don't see the left guard thinking that he's supposed to be going here and the center thinking he's supposed to be going here. And that's, that's a credit to all of them to understand what we're doing. Um, but there's a trait that they, that they carry in that they're, they're being coachable. And I've said in this room before, I, I personally am the hardest on that group, haven't been a former one. And I have said in this room before that your program, if you want a good snapshot of a program, look at their offensive line. How do they play? How do they gel? What's their temperament? What's, that's a good indicator of your culture. That's a great microcosm of a culture of a team. And so we, I, I guess I put that, that pressure, if you will, on them to make sure that they embrace that responsibility, if you will. And so they respond to that, and they go out there and they play their asses off. Because they did. They played really physical last Saturday. With, with Jalen missing time, uh, obviously Cole Ballard you know, goes up to backup quarterback and everything. What, what progression have you seen from him over the year that, that you trust if, if he had to get on the field at some point? You know, I think if you were to go back and look at some of the, the transcripts from questions in fall camp and things like that about him, his ability to orchestrate, if you will, all those things that we're doing is at a level as for a freshman that, that really is puts him in a really unique stratosphere. Um, so he manages that stuff fantastically well. He, much like I've been saying about a lot of our players, is getting better every week, right? Okay, and he embraces this opportunity as, as players should because what ha typically happens during the fall, and you know, if you could just imagine being a college player, right? And you're so excited to come in to do college football for the first time in your life. And you get there and you lift and you train and you see your body start to change in a matter of weeks, right? Because you're eating and training at a level that's so different. And so you have all this, you know, excitement and enthusiasm. And then you go to fall camp and what we practice, everybody gets reps. Okay. And so he's doing this. And, and again, I'm sharing this story about him and other players. Now, what changes for a lot of guys, especially when they first get to college, is then the games start. And they don't play as much. But well, they had all this enthusiasm and excitement. And here I'm getting bigger, faster, and stronger, and all this. I'm not playing quite yet. And of course, this isn't everybody, but it's most of them. And so what happens is you kind of all of a sudden emotionally have to figure out how to overcome something like that. Like, man, I'm getting bigger, faster, stronger, but I'm still not big and fast and strong and smart enough. <clears throat> okay? And there's usually a little dip or a plateau that occurs for most, most players mentally, right, physically, as you get into September and October. And a credit to Cole, he's been able to continue to elevate and rise and, and, and step up every week. Right, so I'm just sharing that as if you could just imagine being that age and going through that in a matter of you graduate high school, you go to college, June and July and August, and then in September, what am I playing? Right, it's hard. It's hard to go through. And so um, how you respond to that is what really allows people to put themselves in a position when, like him, he gets a moment, he'll be ready. And he's responded the right way. Daniel Highshaw is on a comeback player of the year watch list. Just how impressed have you been with his production this year? Awesome. Really, really impressed. Um, you know, as you can see with him, and much like Devin, because I think someone asked this question maybe a week or two ago, you can see how they're starting to diversify themselves within the offense and able to do different things and line up in different spots. And there's no question that when, when him and those other guys are, uh, you know, Daniel and Dev are touching the ball, I mean, it's, it's some things that people are going to like, mm, do we really want to make sure this guy is in one-on-one -on -one situation to tackle that guy? And um, they're a great compliment because when you watch Daniel run the football, you, you mean he's going to run you over now. But he's also got the speed to run right by you. He's also got a little bit of a twitch, right, to, to juke you out. And you get there in Devin, who, who has really, you know, embraced the patience and the understanding of whatever's doing there. I mean, there's just a great punch counter punch combination. And you can argue which one's the punch and which one's the counter punch any, any day of the week. So um, I'm fired up for those guys. And then you go last week, and then we start talking about running backs. Duff goes in the game. He almost hits 102, right? And you know, so we want depth in that room. And, but to put the Daniel specifically to to come back, you know, the way he has, and I'm proud of him, and I'm fired up for him, right? And um, it's good. It's been it's been fun to watch and be part with it. What's their what's their role as leaders? All three of those guys, really. Their role as leaders, you know, probably you know, similar in the sense of you know, they're all their own individuals. So some maybe talk more than others, and some are maybe more about action. <laughs> But, but I, I appreciate the most about all three of them together, and this is probably true of a lot of positions and really what you all coaches want in a position room, is that they're all making each other better. 
because it's hard to, let's say, Devin, it's hard for him to ever take his foot off the gas in terms of how he's preparing because he sees two other guys behind him who aren't going to do it. And so they all collectively are making each other better. So, so that alone in itself, when our team can see those individuals going against each other every day in practice and making each other better with how they're training, how they're doing it, um, that's a big that's a big part of leadership, right? And so, um, you know, not 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 they're happy for each other's success, which I think is important, you know, because it's easy today to be jealous and everyone wants theirs. And and I, I think if you were to watch when one guy goes and scores a touchdown, the first guy to meet him in the sideline is probably the other one, right? So I think that's really cool and special. Do you sense? Uh, I know you guys are are similar when when it's Jalen or when it's Bean. And- Things don't change a whole lot, but do you sense when when maybe Jalen's been out that that running back room is like, okay? We'll take a little more of this now. Well, I don't know that they they you know feel any different one way or the other that way about it because you know the, the situation and the circumstances are what they are, and we're going to be who we are, and we'll always play to the strengths of our team versus our opponents. You know what what do we have to do to win the game? Every game. There's a recipe to win the game. What does that, you know, what's an offensive game then look like to help the defense or vice versa and special teams? And they all have to fit together <coughs> harmoniously to help you win. That's the recipe. And that last week was a great example of that. I don't know that they go, well, let's carry the weight, you know, the burden of this because Jason in his own right has been playing pretty good and did a great job of, you know, um, handling that game, right? And again, to do what we do and to do that and orchestrate it, he's making decisions in every snap, right? So I don't know that they, say that per se I, you know collectively it was more we need to bounce back after a you know a bad loss the right way and they didn't that's good coach okay. more questions all right thanks everybody Let's go. Thanks.